Continuing our disassembly of the TIAC-144, let's detach any of the cables that are connecting this RP amp to the rest of the system. So we've got a double-ended cable here that's connecting to controls for the tape queue. It's marked here as 2VR. I would fit cables like that, you can probably just use the strength of them. If you're feeling cautious, you can jam a flathead screwdriver into the space like that to get them out. So you've got this uh, five pin plug at each end. This cable here goes to the mixer, pull that out. It's good that it says where each of these sockets go, it helps you in reassembly. In addition to you know pin numbers, colour of the headers where you have these odd red ones to differentiate from white ones. So this is going to the control boards. This one's going to the mixer. Another control board one, another control board one, another control board one. So at that point, that's everything that's going to the control boards detached. And as I was saying earlier in the series, we really have to take this amp PCB out completely in order to do cleaning of the mixer, because the mixer is underneath here. If I tip that, you can see that we've got three voltage regulators. Well, I assume that's what they are. There's some sort of transistor that's dissipating a lot of heat anyway because the heat sink part is mounted to the metal plate at the back. Much better we unplug them at this end and leave that in situ because sometimes when they're attached like that, there's a sort of heat compound like you might use to connect a, a CPU to its heat sink. I don't really want to disturb that, so I'll just attach those there. And then we've got this big plug, which is joining all this filtration and rectification section of this board to the transformer. I suppose if this had been turned on very recently, then maybe I'd be a little bit cautious about getting an electrical shock, but you know, it hasn't been on for a couple of days, so I'm not going to bother to discharge the capacitors or anything. And what else have we got? It's still attaching this, right, this cable here. It seems to be going down to the mixer. Right, I think that's everything in terms of cables. I don't want to bugger about on camera too much, so I'm just going to stop the camera just now and I seem to remember there's some sort of hinging mechanism here. Or maybe I'm getting confused with a Fostex 250. Bear with me. Yeah, so I was getting confused with a Fostex 250. It's basically just four screws. One, two, three, four. They are similar to the ones that were attaching the transport to the chassis, but they're just a bit longer. They've got this... Uh, I've got this washer built into them. And then these tabs at the top fit into slots. See, I'm trying to point while it's holding um, at the, on the back plate of the 144. And these screws, you can see they're going into these mounting posts that also act as spacers so that the two sides of these facing PCBs don't touch each other and short anything. Here's a little design quirk of this unit, which I seem to remember it kind of caught me out, gave me a bit of a headache on the times where I've accessed a unit like this before, which is you've got one, two, three cables that are double-ended and they're kind of, one end of them's connected between the two layers of PCB. I seem to remember, you know, getting most of the way through assembly and I'd have like, you know, the other end of this and be like, where does this go? So, let's see. I'm going to put some big arrows in a marker pen pointing to these places um, so that I don't forget to plug these in properly when I'm reassembling it. Let's check, so these, that's three pens, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. So you've got a, a six pin one, a seven pin one, and a three pin one, so we're not gonna get those mixed up. So what I'll do is actually remove those completely and I'll put them all in one kind of uh, bag, baggy. Some of you all with the same lifestyle choices as me know why we call this a baggy. One, four, four between layers. Couple of little steps here. Three screws removed. No washer, but the same sort of length as the ones that were attaching the RP amp board there. Two. We're going through this bit of shielding. I guess there's some extra need for shielding in this area. 
and the other one was just directly to the chassis there. So I've put shirt, shirt, and chur, shield, shield, chassis to remind myself on reassembly. At that point, I'd kind of thought, I mean, there's, there's a cable here. It's a stiff one, so I'm going to use my pliers for that. But yeah, I, I thought that at that point I was going to be able to lift that out. But it's still very attached, so maybe one of the horrors about uh, working with this that I'd forgotten is that you actually need to take the entire front faceplate off in order to kind of access the mixer. Let me go off screen again and investigate that further. And the answer to what I was just asking myself there is yes, you do need to remove the entire front part of the case in order to access the mixer. I've removed one, two, three, four, five, six screws, which are corresponding to one, two, three, four, five, six mounting posts. You can see two of them are broken, so I'll be um, spin welding those back on. And um, just to give you the location of those little screws, then that's one, two, three, four, and five and six you have to access through these holes in this board. The screws that came out of there are fairly short. They've got this kind of erect nipple-like configuration. I've been looking at some funny nipples, so bear with me. But yeah, like a uh, outer lip and then a, a sort of divot in the centre. I don't know if divot's a real word. Anyway, look, they look like that, all right? They look like that. So yeah, we've got all these kind of dust savers doing their job. One of them, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, anyway, at least six. If these screws need to be removed before I can get that mixer out. And then once I've... This is another metal plate under there. You need to take that off before you can clean the pots. This is why I'm saying this one's really hard to disassemble. I mean, nothing I'm doing here is hard, but it's time consuming. It's kind of tedious. And if you're some sort of like beginner at this, who's sort of intimidated about opening it up at all, then four levels of disassembly later on, you're going to be like, oh, fuck this. The 244 is a much nicer unit to work on from a beginner's point of view. Anyway, I will continue to remove these and figure out exactly which of these screws need to be removed and then come back. One little thing I'd suggest doing at this point is um, if you're going to be putting this face down just because of the transformer um, that's still got a bit of weight to it, got these two little protruding LEDs in this kind of oblong format that are slightly hard to get hold of. So I'm detach the four screws there so that when it's on its front I can leave it like that and the weight of the unit isn't going onto these LEDs so they don't become bent or broken. The screws that hold these down, it's a bit like the ones on the 244, they're flat but then they've got a sort of second level underneath them so that there's a little bit of play in the board. The screws that you need to remove in order to get the uh, mixer to come away from this upper section I've marked with red arrow one, two, three, four, five, six attached to the metal plates above the mixer controls themselves. And then actually you need to remove one, two, three screws that are attaching this back panel that I'm tapping with my thumb to this part of the chassis. You're gonna then find yourself at this point where these parts are kind of still attached because the cable going to the power switch is going through this sort of plastic fitting. I tried to research it once and I think there is a, um, a specific tool that you can get to undo and redo this. I don't have one, I've forgotten the name of it. It's going to be a lot easier to deal with the cleaning of this if this comes away from this backboard altogether. In order for that to happen, then I'm gonna to have to remove one, two, three, four, five of these quarter inch jacks, and then one, two, three of these plastic clips without first having removed the screws that get these two metal parts together. There's no way to access these black clips. I'll quickly show you how to remove one of these. Basically, there's a pin in the center. You push it through, the splay part closes, and then the entire thing will come out at the front and then when you're reattaching them you sort of pinch those together and make sure it goes through the hole and then when you push that in that makes that splay and stay in place again it is free and now we have a bit of rare scottish sunlight catching this accumulated filth that looks like tree beards fanny as though it were dew on a snow drop the bits that came off of these um, quarter inch jacks three parts you've got your nut got a metal washer and then you've got this indented plastic kind of fitting that 
fits in the socket on the back of the rear panel. As you can see, we are not out of the proverbial woods yet. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen screws, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen. Twenty-two washers to remove before we can properly access these for cleaning. <sighs> Finally got enough access to these potentiometers to clean them. Uh, thankfully, as Tascam continued, they never again made a mixer so difficult to access. So the plan with this is the same way that I go about cleaning any mixer. Made a few videos specifically about it or alluding about it before, but if you haven't seen those, use compressed air, or in my case, I've got this um, camp bed. I think I've cut the end off now. Gives me a continuous supply of blow. So it'll blow all the dust out of there. Get some contact cleaner in there. Now in the past I've been using Surface Hole Super 10. The thing is that this will leave the faders and pots feeling quite kind of dry. Um, so you need to follow up with a lubricant. I've been using this Deoxit F100L. I've recently bought some of this, and here in the UK it's about three times as expensive as Super 10, but if you've got a lot of this to do, it is convenient, because it doesn't seem to require the lubricant afterwards, it seems to do it in one go, so I mean, what I might end up with doing with this is first pass with service oil, because it's cheaper, blow it out, and then put this in on the second pass, and I would expect that to mitigate any kind of scratchiness or nasty feeling to any of the faders. And when I come back, we'll do any remaining disassembly on the bits of the 144 that aren't the transport. <laughs>